Alright, okay. So, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh and welcome to tonight's Instagram live session with Iman. Uh, my name is Nur Izaida and tonight we will be talking to an author whose book has become a bestseller ever since it made its appearance on imanshop.com. Waalaikum assalam. Sorry for the delay. How, how, how are you? You okay? No worries. I'm doing very good. I'm uh, Nur Izaida, but you can call me Aida for short. Uh, and I, I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for making the time to actually join us tonight. I believe it's actually 1.30pm in the UK, yes? Yes, that's why right. it's, it's very hot here today. That's <laughs> part oh. of the reason why I was a bit late. <laughs> I was trying to get, find the coolest room to go to. <laughs> yes, the summer has arrived, it seems. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. You know, in, in the UK, we don't get summer oh, very yeah. often. So when we do, we, we get very excited. Oh. and then we, but, but then we can't take the heat. We're not used to it. <laughs> <laughs> the Malaysians, we're so used to the heat. So yeah, inshallah, may Allah grant you strength to endure the heat, inshallah. All right, Sister Farhan, oh, um, let's... All right. Um, okay, so tonight, the title of our talk, as all of us are aware, is Stay Single or Get Married. Uh, we will be having a chat with you, our author, Sister uh, Farhat Amin, whose book, like I've mentioned before, Smart Single Muslimah, took us by storm in imanshop.com. Yes, that's the one. Um, it is one of the most fast-selling titles on our website. However, unfortunately, currently, it's out of stock. Because everybody okay. seems to be wanting to get their hands on it. Yeah, it will be available okay. online, inshallah, within two weeks' time, hopefully, inshallah. But in the meantime, mm -hmm. uh, I um, I know that you also have other books uh, that you've written as well. So we will be promoting and talking about those books as well, inshallah. Okay. All right. So before we proceed, um, let allow me for a moment to introduce you to our audience, inshallah. So, Sister Farhat Amin uh, is a graduate of UCL, University College London Institute of Education. She was a high school English teacher, uh, which then later became a Muslim coach for people seeking help for matters uh, related to love, marriage, and I believe parenting in Islam as well. So, she is an author to numerous books, one of it being is the fast-selling Smart Single Muslimah. Uh, I believe you also host your own podcast a show titled The Smart Muslimah, and you also have your own YouTube channel, Alhamdulillah. So, <laughs> Sister Farhad, to start off our conversation, can you share with us a bit about yourself and what are you really educating or advocating through your books and podcasts? Okay, well, first of all, I have to like to thank Iman um, Shafi for having me on. It's been, uh, working with you guys has been so nice, oh, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. I think you're probably the nicest <laughs> bookshop and, and just the nicest team. Everyone oh, I've mashallah. spoken to on email and over the phone, Alhamdulillah, it's been really nice. Um, yeah, so really, I think um, w with my writing, uh, it's interesting. I hadn't planned on becoming an author. As you said, mm. I was a high school teacher. Mm. However, living in UK as a Muslim um, and being a practicing Muslim for over, like I, I, I started to wear hijab when I was at college, mm. and it's been it's been very interesting observing the the different challenges <laughs> that Muslim women face in mm. living in the West, and, and mainly the challenge that we want to hold on to our Islam and we want to obey Allah. But what are the difficulties that are put in our way? Not by Islam, but it's, it's just by the fact of living in the West. And so this is something I've been very interested in because it's a struggle I've had. And I see my sisters in the UK, in, in the US, in Europe. Um, but interestingly, it seems that in Malaysia and in the Muslim world, that we have very common um, tra challenges that we're mm -hmm. all facing. So I've always been interested in this. And, and a lot of my reading and the talks and um, <clears throat> the the courses that I've attended over the years um you know as a Muslim you want to know what are my roles what are my responsibilities how do I best obey my creed how do I get to Jannah basically that that's what we're all striving to do and so one of the things that I found very interesting um and surprising was how as Muslim women when we want to uh when we want to get married it seems to become more difficult nowadays. And that's something that I was noticing. Um, but speaking to when uh, when I was giving, um, I gave some talks on feminism and Islam and, and the role of women in Islam. 
the the discussions I had with sisters was that um, the topic of marriage kept coming up. Mm. And initially, I just thought, well, that's just life. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes, it, you know, it, it's easy. But in particular, what seems to be happening, and, and when I'm saying this, I'm not passing judgment mm -hmm. on men or women. Mm -hmm. That That's what's one of the problems I think happens is when the topic of marriage and why sisters are single. Now, I focus on sisters because... I'm a woman and my audience are women. I don't write for men. So I don't, t and I, I don't think I'm qualified um, to, as in, um, I haven't read enough and studied enough to make talk about men. So therefore that's why I don't talk about them. Mm. Uh, but what I think is as women, we can, as, as individuals, you know, we take responsibility for what is in our control on what can, how do we view the subject? Um, and what I've noticed, and so that again, um, just for everyone that's listening, I'm, I'm not judging anyone's decisions. Uh, my, my, all of my writing and, and the podcast and that is really to encourage us to think and to really think, am I approaching this subject from a framework of Islam? Mm. That, that's, what I, that's my objective, inshallah. Mm. Because living in the West, what happens is we don't have, we have so many non-Islamic influences and very liberal <coughs> influences when it comes to this subject. So, and it, it's, it's inevitable. Because for, for, for non-Muslims, the way they view getting married has changed so much mm. and gone so... Um, that it's become very secular. Mm. Religion, okay, they may get married in the church, um, some of them. But as far as religion, it doesn't impact their decision-making. It's mm. more about what do I... What makes me feel good? Um, what, what are, you know, are, as an individual, I am free to make my decisions, mm. you know, as far as who I marry, when I marry, even if I don't bother getting married. Mm. So as Muslim women, um, we are, we're living in that environment and it's very difficult to not be affected by that. Mm. So whether it's through the books that we're reading, you know, the movies that we watch, the, the, the romantic novels we may read, um, and even at school, again, as a woman, uh, getting educated, um, as a young woman getting educated in the UK, Getting married was never something that you attain, like, it's not something, it's not a career goal, basically. It's not something that you would, you know, you're encouraged mm. to do. If mm. anything, it's the complete opposite. Mm. Um, but that makes sense according to their way of thinking. But for them, it's you, you get an education, you get a job, and you work and you establish your career. And then, um, now the things for them, they have, they will have relationships mm. out of marriage. That, that's what everyone does. But for us, that doesn't, that goes against our deen. Mm. And I just like to say, in Islam, we are, of course, Allah allows us, and we're encouraged to gain an education, mm. whether, it, you know, Islamic education is, is the obligatory one, and then getting an education as far, as long as it doesn't contradict Islam, again, that is absolutely fine. And even working in a halal environment and a halal, you know, uh, um, uh, what would I say, career, again, those are two things that are allowed. So I don't want anyone to leave this discussion thinking I'm saying no women should not get an education or uh, study yeah. um, or work but the problem w what we have to realize and it every single person needs to realize this for themselves is have we taken that um has that have we been affected and, and I think the word feminism I'm going to have to bring that into this that have we been affected that to the point where we are also allowing education and career to supersede the idea of getting married that for us we're also thinking you know what i'll um i would rather i'm going to delay it and i'm because my education my career is more important that that is something that i see happening okay but then what i also see through my coaching is that sisters who have done that not everyone mm -hmm. again I, I can't i'm not going to be lazy and stereotype and generalize everyone but generally sisters who are I find uh, have not got married. They are saying that they wish they had not done that. Mm. That they wish that they could have. They, we don't have to follow that Western way of thinking. You can get married whilst you're studying. You can get married. You, why is it that we have to establish our career and then we have to get married? Well, that's not what Islam says. You can get married any time you want to. Yeah, mm. I know. I'm, I'll just give my own example. I um, got married. I had my children and then I went back to education and did my teacher. I did my degree whilst I was married mm -hmm. and my teacher training. 
And I know many other sisters who they've chosen a route that fits in with what they, you know, um, what um, it, it fits in with what they, the many things that they want as a Muslim woman. So we want to get, have a, a loving relationship with, um, you know, a husband. We want to have children. We can't, those things that Allah has put inside us mm. and what society, and, and I'll be honest, and feminism in particular, and that's affected the way of thinking when it comes to women and our roles and our responsibilities. They, that's just the complete opposite. Um, it's just that, no, why why would you want to be subservient to mm. a man? Which, again, in Islam, and again, that's another discussion. Why would you want to give up your earning potential and your freedom mm. to take care of children mm. where you're not getting paid and you're not even valued for doing that? These are all the things that, in, in my book, I, I found I really wanted to look at from an Islamic perspective, but without blaming and having a go at women because what I didn't like was when you go online instead of there being this love and compassion for uh, between men and women as far as Islam says there seems to be this kind of like battle going on between mm -hmm. oh well if you're not married then that's your fault you know you should have um you know it, it's very it's quite childish I found mm. instead of thinking how can we solve this problem how mm. can we help men and women get married mm -hmm. it was just let them have a go at the women or let's have a go at the men that you know very, very um an un un islamic discussion i found I see. Uh, and it might get more views and it gets more likes and people sell their courses based on and their mm -hmm. you know on uh, i do see this negative kind of hate mm -hmm. but you think that's not what islam says and and in the book i dedicate a whole chapter to why is this why is marriage going out of fashion mm. because that's what i was it's not that women and men don't want to get married but i just think we have been so affected by liberal thinking and and that's what i'm hoping we all do that we take a step back and think i need to reevaluate how i'm looking at this inshallah that, mm. that, that was a very long answer no, <laughs> really insightful and profound mashallah um mm -hmm. For those who have joined us, welcome again tonight. Uh, we are having an online um, Instagram live session or basically just a friendly chat with a best-selling author of Smart Single Muslimah, Sister Farhat Amin. So tonight's uh, basically chat uh, is entitled Stay Single or Get Married. So as I've mentioned, this topic, any topic related to marriage is as old as time. Men talk about it, uh, women worry about it, and the society has their own idea about it. And I believe the social climate surrounding this topic has also evolved over time, um, as you mentioned earlier just now. So um, going back to what you were saying just now, um, right now there's a different kind of challenge when it comes to getting married. And today women are more empowered uh, when it comes to making their own decisions, uh, whether they want to have their own career first, whether they want to choose their own path first. But how has all this um, basically what society tells us, the education that we've received, how has all this impacted the way we perceive love and marriage, especially in Islam? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that when, when we're looking, like I mentioned previously, that we can't ignore that popular culture and, and, and popular culture is built on, again, the very liberal ideas of... Mm you are free to you are free to do whatever you want that, that's the main thing as long as you don't harm anyone else that that, that seems to be the only thing that uh, is the the limiting factor mm. that you know you should love whoever you want to you should um you know no one should tell you how to live your life so now if you just take those two things when we look at in islam we have the prophet sallallahu if you look at this in the time of makkah they had a very, um, whether you call it dysfunctional, whether you, call, you could call it oppressive, we mm. can call it a very, uh, even some of the, their practices regarding relationships between men and women were frankly disgusting. And when you read about the way men and women mistreated each other, and there were no, some some people had fine, mar okay marriages, but if you just, when you read about Arab, pre-Islamic Arab culture, it's quite shocking what they used to do. And when Islam came, and, and so what we find that women didn't have rights, men didn't have rights, children didn't have rights, 
if, and that isn't an exaggeration. If you read about pre-Islamic Arabia, and I really encourage you to do that, um, and I'm sure there were, you have books in your bookshop about that, that it would, about society, it, it was not nice. Um, if, you, if you were rich and powerful, and you could also, if you were a man back then, but again, you had to be a rich, powerful man from a mm. particular tribe. So it's not like all men had it easy back then mm. either. There, there were, um, so when you, that was the society that Islam came to. And so what you have, the Prophet Sallallahu when the Quran was mm-hmm. revealed, mm-hmm. and the rules relating to family, to responsibilities, to rights, to inheritance, Islam gave very detailed rules about that because left to people and left to no, you know, with no accountability, mm-hmm. no checks or balances, no fear of Allah, mm-hmm. no fear of the hereafter, human beings will take, if they can take advantage yeah. of each other yes. and mistreat each other, they will do that. So Islam came to regulate that and put, and the people who were men and women who were uh, oppressing each other, it came to prevent that. It, it didn't make everyone perfect, but it, you now had roles and, and we see in Medina then, you know, if you look at Surah Nisda uh, in particular, um, the rules came and those rules were not to um, restrict people, to harm people, not really, they were all for their good. And you then see this change around in this completely different society compared to pre-Islamic uh, Mecca, you know, in Arabia, to Medina, that now rules were put in place. And then you also had the law of the land, you know, the Sharia was there and that was enforced. But then you also had the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his marriages and his treatment. So you had that and Alhamdulillah, then there was more, this idea, the tranquility that Allah talks about in the Quran when you get married, that that was the the method to establish that. (coughs) But like I said, it wasn't perfect because human beings aren't perfect. Mm -hmm. And you need to have the, the, we, accountability and punishments on pe- for people to, to keep them in check. So now that was what we were given. So now what we need to then think about when we're thinking of marriage, so just as an example, the family structure, it is that, you know, the very famous Hadith about, and, I, and I've got, um, I'm sorry I'm powerful, but I've got all the Hadith and eyes in here. But um, the family structure we know is that the husband, what is the, um, He's in charge of the family. He's responsible to uh, take care financially of the mm. hus- um, the wife and children. He p- he's there to protect them. You know, he has that role. And then the wife, her sphere of influence and her responsibility is the home, the children. And then the children, they respect their parents. Mm. You know, that's the that's the structure we have. And there are many hadith and ayah that give more details mm. about that. <coughs> so... That is our structure, mm. but that is that is labelled as patriarchal by liberal society, mm. and they say that no, why should a man be in charge? Mm. Why should it should be equal? It should be completely equal. Mm. That, that's what we're being told mm. constantly, and so therefore, when we're going into marriage, we will be thinking it's deciding. Okay, am I? What do I want? Do I want this? Um, so-called equality-based marriage mm. or do I want to go for this marriage that um, I'm going to be like I'm being told I'm going to be a second-class citizen and so therefore and then the thing is what you have is there are bad examples of bad marriages in all Muslim communities that that we cannot ignore now what I would say those bad marriages now if just because people uh, you know, um, Muslims, you know, unfortunately, Muslims steal, Muslims drink alcohol, Muslims commit adultery, mm, you know, yes. every, you, you have that, but is that a reason to then throw the rule out, say, oh, cause if Muslims commit adultery, so I'm going to commit adultery, mm. or Muslims drink alcohol, I'm going to drink it's a very, it. It's a very simplistic way of thinking that there are so many bad Muslim marriages, you know, men with beards, women in hijabs, and they're not happy and their marriages mm. are bad, therefore... I don't think I don't want to go for the go down the Islamic route. I'm going to try another route. The idea where I get to choose and my husband doesn't have he doesn't tell me what to do and I don't tell him what to do. But we're both happy. But that and basically that's the model that seems very enticing. And you know I'm gonna the way I'm going to find my husband isn't that I'm going to, you know I'm going to date and I'm going to go online and I'm gonna I need to get to know him. I need to fall in love with. The, per- my, the person before I marry them. That, that's the, they're the two things. That's what we are being 
constantly told. And it's very easy to think, you know, because that, that route is very easy. That's the other thing. It's very simple. There's no rules. Mm. There's no, you don't have to tell your parents. Mm. You can, you know, you, you like someone, you don't like them, dump them. It, so that way of getting married, it, it, it's very good for your whims and your desires. Mm. And what I'm saying in the book is that, you know, if you look at where has that, if you, now let's look at Western society, that version of um, viewing love and marriage um, or not even getting married, where has that landed Western society? And if you look at women in particular, mm. um, are they happy? Now, when I'm, uh, when I look at that and see that, and this is borne out through statistics, and I've got them in the book, that um, if we look at, you know, um, women, they, they've, in, a, in a way, they've kind of, in the West, many of them have given up on the idea of getting married. Mm -hmm. but they, they've decided, because, you know, if, if a man doesn't want to marry you, if your boyfriend doesn't want to marry you, what mm -hmm. can you do? Mm -hmm. But if we just look at, you know, the whole Tinder culture that exists, where they have very, men and women are very casual mm -hmm. sexual relationships. Mm -hmm. um, men and women living together, but never getting married. Mm. And then even having children and those children not having, you know, in Islam, we would see them as, uh, let's be completely honest, they're illegitimate, that they're mm -hmm. not, you know, they, they haven't got a husband, they're not in, they haven't had a marriage ceremony. Mm -hmm. But there are many things that you see, even if we look at the idea of the hypersexualization of women in particular, that you have to present yourself in a particular way to get a man, you know, mm -hmm. and once you mm -hmm. even get a man, who's to say, there's nothing you can do if he or you know decides to you know dump you and the effect emotionally on women and the thing is on men as well mm. that, that mentally that you're constantly in relationships and then you're you're breaking up you're you're going with someone you're breaking and even if you, you know i'm not even uh, let's we don't have time to talk about sexual diseases you know even the idea of um, same-sex relationships there's a lot there that when you look at it you think is that really the model that we want to follow as Muslims. Because mm. if we go down that route mm. of ignoring, uh, um, saying that the Islamic route is too difficult, it's too backward, it's mm. too, it's not modern enough, and we accept that, what are we then going to turn into? And mm. that's for this life, whether we'll be happy. What about our next life? Mm. Ignoring all the rules relating to male and female relationships and the social system. But our akhirah, we might be happy in this life, temporarily but I what I'm saying to the audience is think about very carefully what think about your akhira and so you know these are like there's many like um it's funny the book never I mean, never meant the book to be that big but I just had to keep adding chapters mm -hmm. because it, it's um I didn't want to look at this subject in a very um superficial way mm -hmm. because I thought for a sister who buys this book um, I want to address all the issues she may be facing, whether she's in the Muslim world or mm. the non-Muslim world, because mm. due to globalization, um, th the problems that we have in the West have now been transplanted to yourselves. And I think maybe that's one reason why, um, if, whether it's through social media or just through popular culture, to mm. be honest, um, mm. that we, uh, and so I wanted to address them because I thought sisters are facing this problem and maybe, you know, like, for example, um, like one of the issues, like I, I, I do address the issues that the Muslim community mm. have. For example, we have a very big problem with nationalism and racism when it comes to marriage. Mm. That we have, our borders are, were created by our colonizers. You know, when I think of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, that was, you know, the British did that. When I think of Palestine, again, the British did that. But there, we, we are one ummah. But when it comes to marriage, we don't think of each other as one well, normal. We're thinking, um, I know in Pakistanis have to marry Pakistani. Malaysian has to marry Malaysian. And you think, if we just allowed ourselves to marry anyone, as long as they're Muslim, mm. that could resolve that problem of not being able to find a suitable, com you know, compatible husband. I think some of, so some of the things we have to realise we are sometimes our worst enemies. But understanding where that problem came from. Mm. Bomb, but it didn't come from Islam. Mm. So these are the things. And so I think one of the things that I really encourage women to do is that there are a lot of conversations we have to have with 
our families in particular. Mm -hmm. You may not be able to change the whole community. Mm. Don't think you can change, think, I can't change, but within our family, we have to address certain issues. And if we can have these conversations with our parents in mm -hmm. a respectful manner, mm -hmm. I think that was one thing I really encouraged with women that don't just stay quiet and think, okay, if your parents, for example, have a certain list which is making it very difficult for you to get married. Mm -hmm. You need to talk to your parents and say to them, look, this is, you know, is this from Islam? Is it not? Or can we not change them? Because I'm not getting any younger. Let's, mm -hmm. let's just be um, honest. Mm -hmm. And these criteria are making it very difficult for me. So, and if they're not from Islam, especially, then you just think that's just, that's oppressive. Allah hasn't made marriage hard, mm -hmm. but we seem to have made it very hard. I think that that was quite, there were so many, I believe there were so many points and aspects that were touched and addressed um, in your answer. Um, 